So this is the fourth question. And uh, it reads as follows. Suppose that policymakers are considering placing a tax on one of two markets. So there are two markets. Uh, in market A, and then market B, let's suppose, I guess. So in market A, the tax will have a significant effect on the price consumers pay, but it will not affect equilibrium quantity very much. Huh. In market B, the same tax, all right, uh, well, this is, uh, let's assume this is a consumption tax, all right? Meaning for each good you cons the consumers buy, they need to pay a fixed dollar uh, tax. So for example, uh, $1 per uh, uh, consumption good. In market B, the same tax will have only a small effect on the price consumers pay, but it will have a large effect on the equilibrium quantity. Huh. Other factors are held constant. In which market do you think the tax will cause a larger dead weight loss and why? Briefly explain your answer. All right. Um, well, I mean, you may think a lot of different scenarios because this, you know, information given to you uh, can or may, you think, be explained in, in you know, many different uh, ways. But do not overthink. All right. So here, basically, it's, this question is all about uh, relative uh, uh, I forgot the term um, price elasticity and there you go uh, so it's it's relative elasticity of demand and supply curves all right um, well we do not have to have a straight demand and straight supply curves but we usually draw straight, uh, you know, demand and supply curves because that's uh, for simplification. So here in market A, remember it says there's going to be a tax. And so this tax is going to have a significant effect on the price consumers pay, but it will not affect the equilibrium quantity very much. So that can be possible, for instance, if I have something like this, all right? So let's say the tax amount... Well, I did not solve a, a tax question. Maybe I should have done this first. Anyway, maybe I will. So this is the tax amount. All right, so this is the $1 or I don't know, a $5 tax per consumption good. If this is the case, so this is the T, uh, the tax amount. And so what happens is that, remember before tax, this is the perfectly competitive equilibrium outcome. QCE, perfectly competitive equilibrium outcome and this is the perfectly competitive equilibrium price. Well, what happens when I impose this tax, it will, uh, it will not affect the quantity so much, but it, 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 it highly uh, changes the prices. So this is, by the way, price for the buyers and price for the sellers. And uh, again, I, I believe I have a question for this. If I don't, I'm going to make up one example and explain why this is happening when we impose tax. All right, so if it is not 100% clear, don't worry, I will explain this. Um, but here, the opposite happens in a sense. Uh, the same tax will have only a small effect on the price consumers pay, but it will largely affect on the equilibrium quantity. So it seems like both the supply and the demand curves are more elastic in this case because you know, once you sort of fix the size of the tax, you know, something like this. So what happens is that, you know, the price difference for consumers, I mean, is not too much uh, price variations, but the quantity variation. So this is what the new quantity is. So this is Q after tax, AT. So this is Q after tax. And this is Q competitive equilibrium, all right? So, uh, well, then the, well, once you figure this out, I think the rest is kind of obvious, you know, in which market the dead weight loss is going to be larger. Well, obviously in this market, uh, which is intuitive in a sense because it's more elastic. And so any uh, uh, third party interventions 
that is going to influence the market price is going to cause a, a big change in the quantity as you see so therefore the deadweight loss is going to be larger in this part